Interest rates will be in focus at 8.30 Eastern time when we get the September CPI report. Yesterday, Wolf Research said that CPI will be the number one factor in determining whether the Fed hike, uh, or I should say, the Fed ra raises or hikes next month. Join us right now on the recent moves in bonds. Janet Montgomery, Chief uh, Fixed Income Strategist, Guy Labah. Good morning to you. Uh, what do you expect the number to be, and how do you expect um, the Fed to be thinking about this? Yeah, so we don't publish short-term uh, economic data forecasts, but the consensus is right on, I think, uh, based on some very, very broad estimates. Somewhere around two-tenths to three-tenths of a percent, and realistically, it's not going to move the needle all that much. Um, if you look at the core PCE over the last three months, which is really the uh, the inflation metric the Fed is attempting to target, it's been running at just a touch over a 2% run rate. And so I think that doesn't provide a lot of incentive to for further tightening, particularly at a time when we're still feeling the economic impact of roughly 18 months of rate hikes already. So you think this is a, a wait and see, but then do you see, I mean, do you, when you start to look farther out, do you see a rate hike still in the next six months, or do you think we're all just going downhill at this point? I wouldn't say downhill all going could downhill. Be good, could be all, uphill. I mean, downhill could be a good thing. Country. Uh, I'm not right. sure what the metaphor is. But there is a chance uh, that just because of the vagaries of some of the way that inflation data are calculated, we get a slight reset higher into the last couple of months of the year, uh, particularly related to health care inflation as it's reported in the CPI. We, as an economic society, are pretty bad at measuring inflation. We're trying to measure sort of a process that takes years with a couple of point in time numbers, and that introduces a lot of noise. So we could see a little bit of a reset upwards in those monthly inflation readings might spur some hawkish talk. I don't think it's going to really trigger any further rate hikes for the next six months, call it. What was your take on the jobs number that we had last Friday? Some people looked at that and said, hot, 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 too hot to handle. Other people sort of looked through those numbers, looked at, uh, you know, wage inflation, which, which was not nearly as hot, obviously, uh, looked at hour, hourly, uh, hourly wage, hours worked, and, and also didn't see that coming down and said, maybe it's not so hot. What, what do you think? Well, I think it's a continuation of one more data point of remarkably strong economic growth. Normally, at this point in the cycle, again, 18 months after the Fed started tightening and tightening very dramatically, in fact, you would expect intuitively economic activity to deteriorate. And yet in the third quarter, growth appears thus far to have been pretty strong. And the jobs data suggests that uh, it's continuing strong even to the very early parts of the fourth quarter. So what I kind of attribute this to is a growing chance far from a certainty, it's not a prediction, but a growing chance that the U.S. economy is entering into a nascent productivity boom that could pull economic growth higher for much longer than we would normally expect, again, at this point of the Fed rate hike cycle. Well, let's go back to the productivity boom idea. What, what is your true sign of that, and, and when would you know that that's real? Yeah, this quote's kind of become in vogue in the last couple of months or so, but uh, Robert Sala, the, the godfather of productivity economics, said, productivity is evident everywhere but in the statistics. So productivity booms are rare. They tend to be once a generation type economic events. The last one was in the mid to late 90s. And essentially, it's a period of really strong economic growth driven not by creation of jobs, but essentially these other stuffs that are hard to measure. You don't really know. And it's not really measurable until a couple of years into it. For interest rates, however, there's a pretty strong correlation with higher long term interest rates into these productivity booms, if that is indeed emerging. 12 months out, 10-year note right now, we're at 4.548. Where, where do you think it sits? Our official position is agnostic. I know that's a bit of a cop-out. Agnostic? Again, I don't even know what, what does agnostic mean. It, it, means, it means genuinely not sure. I mean, I know what right? agnostic um, means, so but, like, you just don't care? You don't know? What's the... Don't know, right? And so the economic conditions I just described, they could break significantly higher from here. See that as a low probability event, but that, in that scenario, we're looking at probably low 6% 10-year Treasury yield not a forecast, that's just an outcome in that scenario. Much more likely is we get a garden variety economic slowing that pulls 10-year yields to the low 4% range.